Good morning. The, the Office of Civil Service. Nana Ajakum Jamna. Head of the office. <laughs> head, head of civil service. Okay. So when do I come in with the head of the office of the civil service? The chief. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good morning. Respected chief directors and gallant directors of the civil and local government services. Colleague, members of the fourth estate, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My name is Emmanuel L. Ankrab. On behalf of the Civil and Local Government Staff Association of Ghana, I wish to thank and welcome you to day two of the annual Nathan Kwao Lectures and Awards. Let's start with our opening prayer. As usual, we invite Pastor Bayo. Shall we please stand as we pray? Um, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for today. We thank you for the success of our program yesterday. And we thank you for the privilege and the honor you've given us to see a new day. And we believe today will be better than yesterday. We thank you because this day is filled with your joy and gladness. We're asking that the activities of today will be blissful. And we ask that you will guide us and help us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Please be seated. So this has been going on for four years. And yesterday, we had part one. As I explained yesterday, this year has been broken into two parts, part one and part two. Yesterday, we had the lectures. Um, it was presented by Professor Joseph Achuayi of the University of, of Ghana. And the theme was neutrality in local governance, nonpartisan election of MMDCEs. The occasion yesterday was graced by um, Honorable Neil Ante Van der Poy, MP of Ododododo. He was representing the Minority Speaker of Parliament, uh, Honorable Haruna Idrisu. Uh, we also had Nana Atuata, Engineer Nana Atuata, of uh, the head of local government service. Got it right. Okay, and then Michael Ousuni Maku, who is a former secretary of the Public Services Commission, was also here. And then Dr. Teofilos Adumaku of um, MDPI, Management Development and Productivity Institute, was also here, and they made contributions. We took a, a couple of questions. The issue is still hanging. I don't think even by next year we will be off that subject. We'll still be talking about it. Now, today, we are going to observe the award ceremony. And this, this year, we are giving and celebrating gallant civil and local government uh, officials who have exhibited selfishness, loyalty, integrity. Selfless. You know what? During the planning committee, we were joking about it. We say, oh, selfishness and all that. So now it has come all the way. Selflessness, <laughs> loyalty. <laughs> Hoffman, you see? <laughs> Selflessness, loyalty, integrity, leadership. And then there is a special award and an ultimate award. And they are all going to be celebrated this morning. We are going to start straight away with the award on selflessness. And to, <laughs> to, to help us do it, shall we invite the Chief Director of the Local Government Service, Mr. James Opon Mensah. Please join us up here. Now, um, we will have to read their citation. Let's invite Na Amele Van der Poy of the Office of the Head of Local Government Service. Hello. This citation is presented to you, Mr. Alabira Osman, in recognition of your active selfless service to the local government service over the last 17 years. From a humble beginning in the environmental health class in the local government service, you work assiduously to project yourself as a passionate and dedicated staff. 
You sacrifice work any time you are needed to accomplish a task. You come across as a selfless and assertive personality who spares vulnerable time and energy resolving the problems of others. Clossack recognizes your active participation in its activities at the district level where you serve. Your hard work and selfless dedication to service is worthy of emulation. In appreciation of your selfless contribution to the cause of the local government service, Clossack confers on you the Nathan Anand Kau Excellence Award for Selflessness 2021. Please let's applaud and welcome Mr. Alabira Osuman. <laughs> Mr. Osuman is an assistant environmental health analyst. Thank you. Mr. Opomesa, please hang on a second. You're taking, giving the next one. The next award um, on selflessness is going to Miss Janet Sambo, Sambo of Local Government Service. Please welcome her up here. The citation, please. Citation in honor of Miss Janet Sambo. This citation is presented to you, Ms. Janet Sambo, in recognition of your active and selfless service in the local government service over the last nine years. For a hum from a humble beginning, you have worked assiduously to project yourself as a passionate and dedicated worker. You are ready to sacrifice your comfort for the benefit of others, empathizing with all who come to you for service. You are a zealous listener who spares valuable time and energy resolving the problems of others. The calmness you exhibit when faced with working under pressure and the manner in which you manage issues at work are admirable and exceptional. These unique qualities you have demonstrated over the years inspire your colleagues and subordinates. Your hard work and dedication to the service and passion for quality service delivery is quite remarkable and worthy of emulation. In appreciation of your selfless contribution to the cause of the local government service, Clockstar confers on you the Nathan Anand Kwao Excellence Awards for Selflessness 2021. Thank you. <coughs> Chief, thank you so much. Now the next round of awards are on loyalty. Loyalty. And to help us do that presentation is the Minister for Parliamentary Affairs. Please welcome Dr. Evans Agri Darko. Chief Director. <laughs> This citation is presented to you, Mr. Christian Wilson Aiku, for your excellent and meritorious service in the administrative class of the civil service over the last 27 years. Right from your entry into the civil service, you have exhibited a positive first impression on all who have encountered you as you rose through the ranks to the grade of a director. We are united in recognizing your devotion that you attach to your work when duty calls, the enthusiasm with which you attend to urgent duties at the presidency cannot also be overemphasized as you carry out all your responsibilities with the necessary diligence expected of a civil servant. You convey a sense of responsibility when carrying out your human resource duties at all times. Your quest for excellence in nat is naturally displayed in the accolade, Mr. Evidence. Your manner of interactions and human re relations with clients, self-discipline and resolute nature has won you optimal respect from both your superiors and colleagues. 
you are equally timely on your deliverables and perform challenging tasks with the necessary agility and skill. Your prompt response to client requests and inquiries sets you apart from many. You have demonstrated and maintained a high sense of professionalism over the years in your approach to work. In appreciation of your dedication to duty, CLOSA confers on you the Nathan Anankal Excellence Award for Loyalty 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Christian Wilson Ayuku. is a human resource director at the office of the president. The next to pick an award on loyalty is Mr. Richard Kubetesur of the local government. He's a human resource manager, Northern Regional Coordinating Council. Please welcome him. Citation in honor of Mr. Richard Kumbetesu. This citation is presented to you, Mr. Richard Kumbetesu, for your exceptional meritorious service over the last nine years as a human resource manager and local government service. Your commitment to duty, willingness to serve under trying conditions is indisputable. You have sustained good working relations with your superiors, colleagues, and subordinates. You display unfailing sound judgment, exceptional interpersonal relationship and management skills. You constantly adhere to excellent principles that enhance the efficiency of your work and promptly respond to distress requests for personnel. For these dedicated efforts, unwavering devotion and loyalty to duty, Cloxa confers on you the Nathan Anankwao Excellence Awards for Loyalty 2021. Mr. Richard Kubetesu, himself or a representative, please. Okay, let's move on. Um, still for loyalty, um, we have a lady Deputy Director at the Ministry of Communication, Mrs. Ruth Fekachre. This citation is presented to you, Mrs. Ruth Fekachre, in recognition of your loyal service to the civil service since 2009. You execute your work with dedication, loyalty, and accomplished task with diligence as a deputy director in the civil service. Indeed, you were the focal person for Ghana's tripartite delegation at the annual International Labor Conference of the International Labor Organization, ILO, for your consecutive years and accomplished the task excellently. You facilitated the establishment of the Employment Sector Gender Desk and led in the promotion of gender issues within the world of work from 2019 to 2021. Your effort to cause a change in society is recognized internationally through the inputs you make during international conferences. And surprisingly, you were invited as a panel member to share experiences and good practices in South-South and Triangular Corporations with participants of the Rural Academy of the International Training Center of ILO in Italy in December 2019. You were also the government of Ghana's focal person for the campaign on ILO's Convention 190 and Recommendations 206, Violence and Harassment at the Workplace, and featured in the international in the national media in September 2020. By dint of hard work and perseverance, you received an excellence award from the civil service in November 2019. You are always up and running when duty calls and willing to give off your best to satisfy both international and external clients. In appreciation of your hard work and devotion to duty, CLOSA confers on you the Nathan Anankwao Excellence Award for Loyalty 2021. Thank you.
Thank you, Chief Director. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, the awards for integrity. And to help us do that, please let's welcome Miss Christina. Christiana Edmond, Chief Director, Ministry of State Enterprises. Miss Christina Edmond, please, please welcome her upstage. <laughs> so the first to pick an award on integrity is an assistant procurement officer from OHLGS. Oh, wait there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Miss Shilakoa Kwatin. Citation. Citation in honor. Citation in honor of Miss Shila Ekoa Kwatin. This citation is presented to you, Ms. Sheila Ekoa Kwatin, in recognition of your active and dedicated service with integrity in the local government service over the, nine, the last nine years. Your, you joined the service at the sub-professional level in the procurement class. Based on your passion and readiness to learn at all times, you rose to the professional level of the procurement class. You exhibit honesty and tenacity in the course of your duties. Your ability to manage work from your superiors and colleagues is conspicuous, commendable, and worthy of emulation. You are punctual, reliable, and always available when duty calls. Your hard work and dedication to the service and penchant for efficient service delivery is highly remarkable. An appreciation of your reliable service towards the course of the local government service. Cloxa confers on you the Nathan Annan Kwao Excellence Awards for Integrity 2021. Congratulations, Sheila. Congrats. Congratulations. Also for integrity, a yard foreman from the Ministry of Finance, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Richard Obodai Toto. This citation is presented to you, Mr. Richard Obodai Toto, in recognition of your active and dedicated service with integrity in the civil service over the last 21 years. Recruited as a driver grade three, you have risen through the ranks to the grade of a yard foreman. You perform your duties with diligence, passion, dedication, and integrity. Your ability to perform duties professionally elevated you to drive three successive heads of the civil service. You are always there when duty calls and willing to give off your best to satisfy both international and external clients. Your hard work and dedication to service and passion for delivery and timeliness are highly remarkable and reflect your reliability and honesty in service delivery, hence worthy of emulation. In appreciation of your service towards the cause of the civil service, Klosa confers on you the Nathan Anakau Excellence Award for Integrity 2021. Thank you. Sit 
Let's appreciate the clock sack band. Okay, so we have one more category to go, and then there will be a special, and then the ultimate award. But before uh, we get to those, um, um, it's become necessary to take some uh, tips on health, just about 10 minutes on health. And this time, this is something very, very special to almost all of us. It is computer vision syndrome. This is possibly my first time hearing about that, computer vision syndrome. And we have a specialist in the house to talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Chewa of Filter Eye Care. Please welcome her. <laughs> Big round of applause, please. <laughs> the applause this morning is some way. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We all know that the advancement in technology has increased the rate at, at which we all use computers, especially post-COVID. I'm sure even as we are having this program, we have some of our colleagues outside watching us via Zoom and all that. It is important that we know some of the effects that we get as a result of using computers for long. Today, I'm using computer as a general term, referring to all digital screens, digital visual devices. The name, once again, is Chewa, and I'm from Filter Eye Care. Computer vision syndrome refers to all the problems that we have or experience after using the computers for prolonged hours. Some of my ask, what do we mean by using computers for prolonged hours? So if you use the computer for more than three hours in a day, then it means you are using the computer for prolonged hours. Research shows that about 88% of all computer users suffer from computer vision syndrome. And as I said, when I say computer, I'm referring to our tablets, our phone, the regular computers, the TV, and all digital screens. Computer vision syndrome may have immediate effects and even some other effects later on in life. These immediate effects may cause, may affect productivity. The symptoms of computer vision syndrome are listed on our screen here, and I'm sure most of us will identify with one or two of them. So let's say if after a day's work, after staying behind a computer, it's possible that you may experience headaches. When I talk of headaches, I'm referring to the frontal kind of headache. So the headache is actually centered at the frontal region, the forehead area. Then burning sensations. When I say burning sensation, I refer to the feeling of pepper or smoke in the eye. So sometimes you'll be there, then it feels like there's pepper in the eye. That's what I term as burning sensation. The eye can actually feel dry. You can have redness, teary eyes. That's when the eye gets watery. And you can have spinal problems. So computer vision syndrome is not limited to just problems with the eye. You may have problems with your neck, your waist, and all that. So it depends on how well you are positioned when you are using the computers. And it's not just limited to the eyes. The causes, as I said earlier, 
is as a result of using the computers for prolonged hours. As we all know, when you are reading anything from a printed material, the font and the characters are well defined and it's easier for the eyes to maintain focus when reading from these uh, printed materials or hard copies. Unfortunately, when we look on the screens, the characters and fonts we are presented with are highly pixelated and makes it so difficult for the eyes to maintain focus for long. So the more you use the computers, the more you strain the eyes. We also have reduced blinking as a result of using the computers. Naturally, under normal circumstances, the eye is supposed to blink about 22 times in a minute. But for people who use the computers for prolonged hours, because you are so busy keying in things and all that, you tend to blink only about four times in a minute. And nature has made it in such a way that anytime you blink, you have fresh tears being produced to lubricate your eyes. So instead of blinking for like 22 times in a minute, if you are just blinking only about four times in a minute, it means for most parts, your eyes are exposed to all the environmental conditions, like the ACs as we have here, the fans and all that, and it keeps your eyes dry and makes you prone to computer vision syndrome. Refractive errors. When I say refractive errors, I'm referring to any defect in vision. So if there's someone that has any defect in vision, maybe you're unable to see well from afar, or you're unable to see well when things are too close, then you are more prone to computer vision syndrome than someone who has normal vision. Okay, so the picture here shows uh, some of the things that we do that brings about computer vision syndrome. So as we can see, the lady is using the old type of piece. I'm sure we've done away with almost all of them. The cathode ray tube, the tucopo type. Those ones are harsher on the eye. Then the lady is actually turtling. So as we, talked, we, we said before, computer vision syndrome may also affect the spine. Because the lady is not sitting straight, he, she's actually turtling, and with time, she may have issues with her spine and her waist. So it's important that when you are using your computer, your back is straight. It should be parallel to the chair on which you are sitting. The lady has also positioned her mouse in such a way that it's too far from her. She actually needs to bend before she reaches for her mouse. So anytime you are using your computers, it's important that you remember to place your, money, uh, your mouse such that you can easily reach for it without turtling. Then the monitor should be placed a little below the uh, level of the eye so that you don't have to lift up your eyes before you look at them and you don't have to expose your eyes. How do we prevent computer vision syndrome? This is very important. At least it will help alleviate some of the symptoms that we have. It's important to have regular eye massages. There are machines that massages the eye. So when you massage the eye, it helps with the tear production and it helps with lubrication. Those who use comp uh, spectacles, it's important to always make sure that your spectacle correction is intact and is uh, coated with some things to help protect the eyes against the computer rays. Do not sit directly opposite air conditioners. The air that, is, that comes out of the air conditioners are icy dry. So if you are using your screens and your eyes are open and all that, and you have this icy dry air blowing over your eye, it dries up the eye quicker than it's supposed to be. Then with time, you have dry eyes and very soon you start hearing when there's nothing wrong with you. Someone might ask, why do we say that my eyes are dry when actually I have water always on my eye or my eyes are always watery? What happens is that when the eyes get excessively dry, the eye tells the brain, I don't have enough tears lubricating my eye. Then the brain in turn instructs the tear production unit to produce excess tears. But unfortunately, the tears that are produced in excess are not of a good integrity as compared to the thin film of tears that normally lubricates our eye. And that's how come you may have dry eyes, but still your eyes get watery. 
It's also important to cut glare, like we've done beautifully here. So if you have reflections from the windows and all that, it's important to block them with curtains or blinds. For people who use the screens, it's also important, if possible, that you get anti-glare. There are these screen protectors that protect our eyes against the screens. Rearrange your chair if possible. If your chair at the workplace is positioned such that you face the AC directly or you sit directly under the fan, then it's important that you are re rearrange such that the AC blows from behind you and it doesn't hit the eye directly. And for those of us who drive, if it's possible, if the, the weather is not too hot, it's, it's important to enjoy fresh air instead of always having the AC blow over our eyes when we drive. For people who may need to copy things from printed materials onto the computers, it's also important that you place them on these wooden stands. I'm sure in the olden days, the secretaries had them. They place some wooden stand beside the monitor, then they place the printed material on it. It helps such that your eyes do not have to do the tedious work of traveling all the way from the top of the monitor to uh, the top of the table. If you place a stand, if you don't have a special stand, you can just get stack some books together, then you place your material on it to make it easier for the eyes to maintain focus. Let's say after a day's work, you are having any of these symptoms that I talked about. What you can do at home is to do cold compressors. You can just get cold water or you dip a clean face towel in cold water. You close your eyes and you place the damp cold uh, towel over your clothes list. It helps at least reduce some of the symptoms. It's also important to eat well. Good eye health starts from your table. When I say eat well, I'm not saying eat a whole load of food, but make sure that your food contains things like things rich in vitamin A and omega-3, especially for people who use the screens very often. It's important to eat a lot of watermelons and a lot of, let's say, oily fish like the tilapia and salmons, which are rich in omega-3. Okay, so this is a good way to use your PC. The back is flat and all that. The mouse is placed close to him. Okay, so for nothing at all, I leave you with the verse from the Bible. Matthew 6, 22. The eye is the lamp of the body. When your eye is clear, your whole body also is full of light. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. A bigger round of applause for her. Yeah, we would have taken some questions, but we have rushed out of time. So those who want to see her can get in touch with her just outside the auditorium, and we'll be giving out her number in due course. So, so far, so good. Uh, we've had awards on loyalty. Um, those who collected awards on loyalty, if you listen to the citation, it's got to do with commitment to service, willingness to serve under trying conditions, support for government's policies, and allegiance to the state. And then those who collected awards for integrity, uh, as you heard from their citations, um, very tempting. Ability to withstand undue influence, trustworthiness, justice and fairness, transparent and then accountable. And then the ones for selflessness, quote me, right? <laughs> Public interest minded in service, dedication to service, uh, and a few others, you, 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 you got that. Now we're going towards leadership. And the people we're going to call this time around, uh, people who have exhibited ability to inspire others, commitment and passion to work, ability to delegate and empower, innovation and proactiveness, and then emotional intelligence. Now, to help us to do those presentations, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Chief Director of the Ministry of Environment, Science, and Technology, Cynthia Asari Bediaku. Please welcome her. The applause to the ladies. When you don't applaud, they, don't, they wouldn't come forward, please. <laughs> 
once again, let me um, invite um, our ladies. Um, Na Am 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 Amele Van der Poy is from local government. I beg your pardon? Cynthia is not around? Okay, then let me, if she's not around, can we please invite Mr. Noah Tumfu, Chief Director of the Ministry of Sanitation and Water Resources, please. Okay, so uh, two ladies have been helping uh, us with the citations. One of them is now Meli van der Poel of local government, and then Dokas Anoko Adu of Clocksack. I think, Dokas, you are reading the next one, right? Okay. And the award for leadership, the first award for leadership is going to an assistant director in the Western Regional Coordinating Council, second D. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Samuel Odoi Tutuani. Is anyone here to pick, it up, to pick it up on his behalf? Okay, let's go ahead with the citation anyway. Citation in honor of Mr. Samuel Odoi Tutuani. This citation is presented to you, Mr. Samuel Odoi Tutuani, in recognition of your exceptional meritorious service over the last 12 years as an administrative officer in the local government service. You exhibit dynamism, commitment, dedication and leadership qualities in the course of your duties. While you demonstrate diligence and perseverance, you equally display a high sense of initiative and purpose. Your tenacity of purpose is worthy of emulation. Your good working relations which make you a team player is a reflection of your respect for your colleagues. The fact that you carry your team members along Resulting in high achievements is commendable. Your contribution to the course of Clocksack at the regional and district levels is also worthy of recognition. Your modest outlook, interactions, and human relations have won you optimum respect from your superiors and colleagues. You have never relented in the pursuit of quality, which immediately becomes visible wherever you serve. You have exhibited and maintained an impeccable sense of leadership over the years of your approach to work. And in appreciation of these, Cloxa confers on you the Nathan Anankwao Excellence Awards for Leadership 2021. Two rounds of pictures, one with the citation and one with the plaque. And let's be reminded, all our deeds today are taking some undisclosed cash. I mean, if it's coming from Clossack, it should be fact, really. In previous years, it's been um, flat screen, TVs and all that, and I'm sure Clossack conducted some research, and the guys are like, Master, give me the cash. So... <laughs> It's some big cash uh, going out to them. Now, the next award on leadership is going to an officer from the accountant, a controller and accountant, it's an accountant at the controller and accountant general's department. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Emmanuel Tego. This citation is presented to you, Mr. Emmanuel Tego, for your exceptional contribution to the service over the last 33 years. As Deputy Head of Payroll at the Controller and Accountants General Department, you exhibit qualities of good leadership, dedication, and commitment to work at all times and under challenging conditions. You are always ready to serve your working clients who have salary-related issues. Your quiet demeanor and hardworking nature have made your colleagues, staff, and subordinates to refer to you as the father for all. You are affable, very welcoming, peaceful, and pay attention to every detail at, that an ordinary person will overlook. Your good working relations towards both clients and staff makes you a team player and a leader everyone wants to work with. This is an enviable trait that has earned you this accolade. You prove yourself as an effective head of unit, inspire, mentor, and an intelligent leader who gets his assignment completed extraordinary and in time. You communicate well with everyone who comes close to you 
and are calm even when working under pressure. In acknowledgement of these impressive contributions to the entire service over the years, Cluster confers on you the Nathan Anand Kwao Excellence Award for Leadership 2021. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tunfu. Now to a special award. Two more awards, a special one and an ultimate one. A special award is going to a retired chief director. But before we do that, let me, um, let's, invite Nana Rex Owusu and her former clerk of parliament to help us to do that presentation. Okay. Okay, so he's a former head of local government service, a chairman of, chairman of local, local government, and then a former clerk of parliament. Please uh, give him a big round. Of And to come up here to collect the special award, ladies and gentlemen, a retired chief director at the Ministry of Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs. A lot more to be said about him in the citation. Please welcome Mr. David Yarrow. A big round of applause, a big round of applause for him. The citation, please. Citation in honor of Mr. David Yarrow. This citation is presented to you, Mr. David Yarrow, in recognition of your leadership and dedicated service to Ghana over the past four decades. You are a dedicated and accomplished public servant with over 40 years of experience in various capacities across the nation. From an administrative officer, class four and in the districts rising through the ranks of the enviable, sorry, I take it again. You are a dedicated and accomplished public servant with over 40 years of experience in various capacities across the nation. From an administrative officer class four in the district, rising through the ranks of the enviable position of chief director and later the administrator general under the office of the president. Your whole career in the civil and local government service has been marked with distinctive service worthy of emulation. Clocksack acknowledges that your successes in public life were not by chance, but by dint of dedication and hinged on your enthusiasm to always make a difference wherever you find yourself. You have exhibited and maintained an inspiring sense of leadership over the years in your approach to work, which visibly display throughout your tenure in the civil and local government services. Your sterling performance as the head of the bureaucracy of the Western Regional Coordinating Council and how you composedly and competently displayed your full understanding of the issues of accountability during the Ghana at 50 Presidential Commission of Inquiry Public Hearings is worthy of mention. Your eloquence in the administration of your audience and the general public deservedly earned you the praises of the late Justice Dosu, the chairman of the commission, who acknowledged your astuteness and conferred on you the title of the best regional coordinating director of the year. Your good works as a professional public servant, exhibited in your political neutrality and professional competence, was acknowledged when, unsurprisingly, you were appointed the Administrator General as soon as you completed your contract appointment as a chief director. As the administrator general of the Ghana, you established 
the appropriate structures and broad visibility to your office of the Administrator General. You are proud of your achievements. We are proud of your achievements in public service. And you are a shining example for all to emulate as we celebrate you this day. In recognition of your accomplishments, Cloxa confers on you the Nathan Anan Kwao Special Awards 2020. Another big round of applause for him. Thank you very much, Clocks. A band, another round of applause. Clocks, a band. They've always been up to the task.
And now it's time for the ultimate award. Clocksack recognizes this personality immensely. Um, everything is in the citation. And to help us do that, let's please invite Nana Ejekum Jamna to help us do the presentation of the ultimate award. It goes to a former head of civil service. Ladies and gentlemen, most of you know him, or at least you would have heard about him. Please welcome Mr. Willie Kweku Kemevo. The citation. A loud applause, a loud applause. Please. This citation is presented to you, Mr. Woli Kweku Kemevo, in recognition of your sterling performance as a public sector management expert over the last four decades. Your qualities as a manager and administrator were amply demonstrated during your tenure of service in the civil service. You have been a household name in the civil service for the past two decades. Your uniqueness as a person lies in your affable nature. You receive and relate to all levels of staff from senior to junior officers with great compassion. Your emotional intelligence was par excellence. You always have a futuristic view of all things and always proves your leadership prowess by getting all to appreciate and accept your wise counsel. You have been professional in your work and have avoided the limelight in spite of the fact that most of the reforms in the civil service stem from your period as head of service. Your calm demeanor in the face of enormous challenges and agitations have helped a great deal to place the civil service on a pedestal worthy of emulation. Klossak duly recognizes the enormous contributions you have made to the achievements of prevailing salary conditions, your pivotal role, and rich experience which you brought to bear on all the backroom wrangling, leading to the resolution of the various salary-related grievances under the Ghana universal salary structure is still relevant. On this day, Klossak salutes you for facilitating and boldly ceding more than two-thirds of the workforce of the civil service to the local government service in 2010, in spite of the challenges encountered in the transfer of offices. The commendation is in recognition of the widely acclaimed fact that bureaucrats are always striving to expand the organization rather than accepting a heave off. In your case, you did the opposite by defying all the odds and gave meaning to the decentralization agenda of government in furtherance of the political neutrality project and in appreciation of your dedication to the cause of the civil service, Klossa confers on you the ultimate award for the Nathan Annan Kwao Excellence Award for the year 2020. Please let's give him a standing ovation, a standing ovation. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Please be seated. Thank you. Civil Service of Ghana, Chief Directors, the leadership of Glocksack, Directors, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I wish on behalf of all award winners at this morning ceremony to commend Glocksack particularly the leadership of Klosak for this laudable initiative by instituting the Nathan Kwao Excellence Awards. 
This is the fourth in the series, and I happen to be a beneficiary. I thank Crossack for recognizing me and the others. I also want to thank the leadership of Crossack for the great honor done all of us, those who have been selected to receive awards. We believe that we did not serve our nation or support Act because we expected to be given awards in one way or another. We have done that as a matter of duty to our nation and to our association which we belong to. And of course, for a cause, a good cause, which seeks to promote the well-being of not only Ghanaians in general, but civil and local government staff in particular. Little did we know that somebody somewhere was taking copious notes of our work in the service and has consequently nominated us for these awards. We now know that wherever we are and whatever contributions we make in our corners will certainly catch the eye of those who matter. For me, the citations accompanying the awards make some of us feel flattered. I was hearing some of the things for the, about me for the first time. Nobody had ever told me. So I felt flattered. But I believe that the Villaro and Co. might have also felt flattered because our modest backgrounds and professions do not allow us to share in the flattery. But it has happened. So we accept the nice words you have said about us. <laughs> On behalf of the award winners, I hereby pledge that these awards will not be the end of our service to our country and to Closac. That was indeed have rather fired us up to go the extra mile to support our respective organizations. So that at the end of the day, our organizations will grow from strength to strength and also build the requisite capacity to push for better improvement in uh, the well-being of civil and local government staff. But I can't end my brief remarks without urging all of us, and when I say all of us, I'm talking about the retired as well as the serving officers, that they should continue to support CLOSAC because CLOSAC I stand to be corrected, is for now the only official mouthpiece for civil and local government staff. So we must support CLOSAC to be strong and relevant so that they can continuously negotiate for better basic salary first before conditions of service. I believe that when we have better enhanced basic salary, it would trigger the best things we want for ourselves. Because merely even advocating for retirement on salary may not be enough. If the salary level is low, it, it will be meaningless. But if the salary level is high, 
Retirement on salary, even if it's 50%, is fantastic. <laughs> it was difficult for me to say it, but I had to, because uh, I have a few uh, friends and relatives also in the civil service. And if it's good for them, it will be good for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> So on this note, I wish to thank those whose efforts and commitment have uh, made some of us to be given awards this morning. May God richly bless them. And may the same God also bless all those whose prayers have made this occasion possible. And of course, uh, Mr. Rex also answer. I was uh, personally surprised to see you here, and I'm happy about it. I hadn't seen you for almost 10 years now. The last time was uh, when we were doing the protocols for the newly created local government service. And uh, you played a key role. You even, you know, uh, as it were, to use an nice word, you provided some economic recovery for me. <laughs> so, so I thank you all for your attention. I'm here for the vote of thanks. We'll first thank God Almighty for a successful program. On behalf of CLOSAC, we'd like to show appreciation to all dignitaries, Head of Civil Service, uh, Nana Ejekum Jamina, all Chief Directors who grace this occasion. Thank you for your exemplary leadership. You made time out of your busy schedules to join us here today. God bless you. To all individuals and institutions that supported us in one way or the other to ensure the success of this program, we are grateful. And to all invited guests, CLOSAC members, and our friends from the media, we say Aiko for your participation. And finally, to all award recipients, congratulations once again. Do not rest on your odds. Continue to give off your best in the service of Ghana. God bless you all for coming, and thank you. Thank you so much. Ceremony is not over yet, although you've heard a vote of thanks. Uh, very important, uh, we are going to take some pictures. The first picture, we'll still invite uh, Mr. Kemovo up here, and he'll be joined by the chief directors and the head of service. If you should kindly please come up, up here, please. Clock sack, some music, please. Pictures with Mr. Kemovo and the chief directors and the head of service. <laughs> 